Cha 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 A. Let's go. What happened to your wave election? It feels like, oh, what did you f Hey, yo. Here, buddy, you can hold this L, can't hold anything else Put another picture you just made on a shelf Guess that hoodie took away all the backbone that you felt Tell Darius that I shook a kiki up on a cell Get away with it, are you a crooked politician? What's the main difference? Talking shit in Argentina, get your games with it Fuck with issue one on every ballot that run until the wave come Cause you ain't listen So who here's last and why you got on the heels? Man, the poll's so bad, they say you lacking appeals Man, a strike just passed, they finally getting the deal All the roulette chats are eating their last meal Fuck it, money busted, who gon' get the government funded? We busy censuring the phrase that fucking all of a sudden got everyone touching Like I don't even know what the fuck is the meaning of nothing It changes when you beefing with someone Just fucking imagine, unless your name is Gallon You asking to show all this graphic new footage and that new propaganda Man, all of the slander like Jezebel samples or beast in his channel Philanthropy handles morality scandals, y'all fucking angry Yo, get your safe moon crashing Marvel's about to jump at everybody, look passive About to pay the prices like an IRS bracket We were about to open up 11 new chapters Hold this L Where's your phone, buddy? Records seem real funny when you raise money New take, Abigail say Aaron pretty two-faced Mean girl energy Mansion won't defend a seat And BB said that nothing sees until they trade for hostages Except for went away oh, That's exactly what they offered him And then he turned it down for the pile Grab while they dropping bombs If I gotta answer another Do you condemn Hamas? From every motherfucker who ain't read my shit As anti-Semitic attacks crash through their own grip The whole world split And I'm just trying to check in on my entourage While orange motherfuckers throw tantrums Because they're really frauds Uh, uh, uh. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching Freestyle the News. If you like what you heard, please inspire a group of captive like buttons, which happen to be able to manipulate the earth in different ways, shapes, and forms. To be like, hey, like buttons, look, look beneath your feet at the at the earth, and then they're like, oh, oh shit, yeah, we could have just we could have done this, we could have done this the whole. The whole time, ong. And by the way, I caught up with Avatar really late because I went to high school with the guy who played soccer, and I was like mad fucking jealous that he was in a Nickelodeon show. And then it took me years to be like, I'm such an idiot. I should have watched this way earlier. And if you're watching, hi Jack. I did it. I became a I became a rapper person. Anyway, we got a ton of stuff to talk about today, so let's just jump into this breakdown. And we're gonna start today with the SAG after strike deal. Yes, after 118 days, the SAG after strike is over, with SAG after and the AMPTP reaching a historic deal. Now, this is a welcome sigh of relief because, listen, after the WGA secured their deal, people thought, oh, SAG after is just not that far behind. But it turned out that there were still significant issues and the parties were way far apart. What was reported was pay raises on a per subscriber account as well as significant protections against AI. And it's obviously been affecting movies. Have you seen a lot of people talking about, man, man, superhero fatigue. Oh my God, superhero fatigue? Bro. Well, okay, but there's also been like little to no promotion of the Marvels. Biggest thing about that movie, you have Brie Larson, Iman Vellani, Tiana Paris, Park Seo Joon from Parasite. Who I didn't even know until I saw a weird TikTok ad about this. And movies have really been suffering from a promotional angle since the actors have not been a part of a lot of press screenings and press junkets. It's, it's a big deal. So let's talk about these terms because they are significant. And a key thing to note, this is a tentative agreement for three years. But for the time being, we're in a good spot. Okay, I'm going to read off my little prompter here. Okay, so the actors were able to secure a historic pay increase as well as improved healthcare funding as well as unprecedented provisions to protect against AI. The AI thing is kind of the top headline here. It was reported prior to this, the studios wanted an in perpetuity kind of deal for likenesses with AI, and that was just a fucking no-go. But the thing that SAC after was not able to secure was a share of streaming revenue based on subscriber rate. Now they do get bonuses for some of the most watched programs on streaming services. That's a, actually a pretty big deal. But that issue was actually what broke down the talks heavily. Now it's been reported that studios are gonna be cutting back on production. Also, some studios are gonna go into a last ditch effort to really promote a lot of that struck work that needs that promotion, as well as catch up to all of the time that they've lost. A bunch of stuff is shooting. You can hear that Deadpool is gonna be ready by next year. But all in all, like listen, for entertainment, this is a really, really good thing, especially for people who are not as well off as certain other actors. This is going to be hugely significant in helping people who are just breaking into the industry get their heads a little bit above water so that they can have a livelihood and have their passions rewarded without having a fucking computer steal everything. So great news, the SAG after deal will probably be released a little bit today, and if it is, I'll talk a little bit more about it. 
We got a lot more news to cover, but I do want to thank like a big sponsor of Freestyle the News, Incogni. I mentioned it like multiple times on this show, but I am really worried about data brokers and data being passed around all the time. Like if you watched Phil's show this last week, you'll know the data for active duty military members is available for mere cents for data brokers to purchase. And it's like really specific, sensitive data, like addresses and names and data, like really sensitive stuff. Also, did you replace me with a sock? But anyway, besides the fact that that sock cannot wrap, just want to let you know he can't. As technology becomes more prolific, as things become more free, the price you are paying is your data and your information on yourself. And that can often translate to spam calls, to unwanted emails, to weirdly targeted ads. And that's why I'm a big fan of Incogni. Incogni is a great set it and forget it service that takes the painstaking steps to getting your data taken off the dozens of data brokerage sites that are selling and swapping your personal information all the time. And again, we are all susceptible to this. If you've used a social media app in the last like five years, there's a good chance your data is out there somewhere. I've spoken about it before. I have a personal email address that I felt, oh my God, this has been compromised for so long. And when I started using Incogni only a few months ago, it took less than 30 days for me to see differences. I mean, like for example, I didn't get as many spam calls. That email feels a lot cleaner now. In a world where everybody is trying to find out more about you and it's a little bit scary, it's an absolute peace of mind. And if you go right now to incogni.com slash Tabani and enter in the code Tabani, they'll give you 60% off an Incogni plan today. 60% off? That's how much it feels when I get touched by JP once in the corner. They, they need to nerf this character. I'm telling you, I really do like the service. I like the fact that I don't have to send complicated legalese messages to try to get my data taken off there. So please, if you want some peace of mind and you want to support this cool rap show, go to incogni.com slash Tabani and enter the code Tabani and take control of your data today. And now back to the to, to, to stuff. Also, I wanted to update everybody about the Israel-Gaza situation. So again, I gotta be very careful about how I talk about this because YouTube likes to throw a yellow flag on my videos uh, unfairly because they think I'm making light of tragedy. I'm not. So to get this out of the way, before I talk, maybe it'll work. Uh, I condemn Hamas. Israel's occupation of Palestine is shitty. I condemn Hamas. Netanyahu is a bad person. I condemn Hamas. And anti-Semitism is real, and Jewish people are going through a lot right now, in home and abroad. And all of those things can be true, and Gal Gadot can still be kind of a fucking crazy person. So there were a lot of big stories this week, but kind of the big approaching narrative is the growing calls for a ceasefire in Gaza. A lot more you've seen people go like, this is not okay. Hold on, hold on one second. Hello? Yes, I condemn Hamas. The obfuscating has obviously gotten worse more and more as time goes on. And you can kind of see it between two pieces. You can see it between Piers Morgan and Bassem Yusuf's debate and Ethan Klein and Hassan's debate. The Piers Bassem debate is actually a really as much as I don't like Piers Morgan, a really well-structured debate where they actually kind of listen to each other. They are staunchly defending their points, but honestly, Piers does take into account a lot of the things Bossom says about the region, and Bossom does listen to Piers and address things in a pretty understandable fashion, and I think that's a really important kind of way to have these conversations. And it's kind of crazy in the wake of a couple of key details. Number one, Israel has finally agreed to humanitarian pauses for civilians in Gaza to get out. Now, there are obviously issues that people are going to bring up about that, but mainly there are some pauses that are going to be there for civilians. However, for the longest fucking time, the line of the sand has been, hey, release hostages, no ceasefire until the hostages are released. And there are still calls for a full ceasefire. One story that got buried over the week, and I'm kind of pissed it got buried, was that Netanyahu was offered a ceasefire. He was offered a ceasefire in exchange for some or a large amount of the hostages. But just in general, he said outright no. The terms for the hostages kept getting better on the grounds of a ceasefire, and Netanyahu said no, no, no. That is incredibly damning and incredibly fucked up. That is a both sides situation, and the fact that both sides should be mad at this fucking guy and should not cape for the Israeli government, not the Israeli people, but the Israeli government. There are Israeli civilians being held captive by an organization we are asked to condemn, which I condemn, in order for this guy to bomb Gazan civilians out of their homes and indefinitely take over that part. That is why I sincerely believe, I sincerely believe this guy is not for anybody. He gutted his civilians' rights. Him and his government killed 10,000 plus people 
in order to save 250 hostages. And he knew about the attack. Dude, there's so much. Dude, and the propaganda is insane and it's hard. It's hard for everyday Jewish Americans to really see past the fog of war on this because, hey, anti-Semitism is happening. It is a big deal. A great example is the censure of Rashida Tlaib. Now, listen, Rashida Tlaib has been a firebrand for a long time. That being said, this new kind of change in lexicon and speech is a little rich. The big phrase that everybody's talking about is from the river to the sea. Whether this phrase is meant to be genocidal or whether it's meant to be emancipatory. Are you talking about the destruction of Israel or are you talking about the freedom of Palestine? And we've seen these kind of debates happen in, in American politics, honestly, over time. Black Lives Matter, phrases like stay woke turning from a positive affirmation to a negative connotation. Language like this is thrown around in the culture wars and redefined consistently to create new enemies, to create new talking points and narratives. And here we're on the latest front. Again, I'm not minimizing anything, but we're having a sincere debate on multiple things and multiple semantic terms in order to find a very real humanitarian crisis. And the main thing is Rashida Tlaib was censored in a vote with 22 Democrats siding with House Republicans. And look, my personal feeling on this, just in general, right? When the culture itself adopts a phrase and it's been kind of matured in a way where it is pejorative or inspiring to one group of people, we have to kind of understand that cultural shift. But when in real time, that phrase is being redefined by people with political agendas, that's not great. And you can see it in the Ethan Klein versus Hassan Abi debate. Hassan clearly explains the similarities between Black Lives Matter and From the River to the Sea. And a lot of people were coming down on Ethan Klein for not being able to understand it. But here's the danger of that. I actually don't blame Ethan Klein for not being able to understand that. When you have real, very real, clear anti-Semitism in America telling you, hey, everybody actually does want to kill you. Here's a history over centuries of people not wanting you in their homeland. Of course, of course, emotionally you will be compromised and that'll compromise whatever arguments that are logical that will affect you. I'm not giving him a complete pass like, oh, okay, it's just okay to misconstrue things. But I do understand that mindset. It's not coming from a malicious place, but you are changing a historical, a historical phrase that has been used as an emancipatory phrase for freeing Palestinians with this brand new meaning. If you are worried about the Israeli hostages, you are absolutely valid. If you are worried about the children in Gaza, you are absolutely valid. If you are asking me to condemn Hamas because this guy is who you're caping for, not the vibe. Benjamin Netanyahu has shown through time he does not care about his citizens and the IDF under his control does not care about Israelis. After this conflict ends, after all of the dust has settled, after hopefully the hostages are returned, those hostages will have less rights in Israel because of Benjamin Netanyahu. Those hostages will have been taken because of warnings ignored by his government, as well as deals that were offered for their safe return and for the safety of Gazan civilians at the behest of his government. And again, I condemn Hamas but I can also condemn this fucking guy. And that's kind of the point. The world is calling for a ceasefire, not because Jewish lives don't matter. Jewish lives absolutely matter. Gazan lives absolutely matter. Black lives matter. But this guy's political agenda and power grab do not matter and he should not be able to have it. And with the US and other countries getting more and more frustrated with Netanyahu's stubborn position and the fact that he wants to Iraq war this whole thing, it seems like it's not a far off time before Israelis and Palestinians stop fighting each other and start fighting this fucker. And once again, for the 15th time, I condemn Hamas and this bitch. Anyway, that's today's show. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry I got really, really intense again. Also, we have a big story about election 2023, which if you didn't see is right here. Anyway, my name is Ed Tabani and I'll see y'all soon. Let's go.